Like, hey, just a quick update. Uh, I'm just uh, setting up my electric fences. Uh, bears are out. Still a lot of snow. Uh, this clearing here, I'd say within a week, hopefully there's crocuses uh, starting to grow in this field. Uh, the willows are still uh, bare. Uh, no, no signs of pollen yet, uh, but hopefully we start getting some plus 15 Celsius weather and uh, natural pollen start showing up. Uh, colonies are, they're doing fine. They're foraging for nothing, but uh, today's a, a, a windy day, so I put my feeders on. So at least they have some feed. It looks like they're taking a bit of it in, uh, not much. Uh, but a week ago, before I left on a business trip, uh, they all got about uh, two pounds of pollen patties, so uh, that's all I can do. Temperatures say they're they're holding steady. They're not uh, massively brood rearing, but uh, at least uh, they're not falling behind. Uh, so what I'm going to show you now is my uh, electric fence setup. Uh, you'll notice uh, lots of wires. So we got grizzlies up here and black bears. So the goal is uh, basically maximizing the zap that the uh, bear gets out of the uh, the shock. So I'll just get it closer so we can actually see the wires. So the way I set it up is, so the top wire is hot, ground, hot, pretty much ground, hot, ground, hot, ground. So the reason I do that is this very sandy soil. So right now the soil is conductive because it's, it's uh, saturated with uh, melt. But uh, within a couple of weeks, uh, the dry, it's, it's sandy soil, so it's a really poor conductor. So what I do is I set it up as a, I think it's called a ground return setup. I'll, I'll put a link on for the, uh, this fence setup. Uh, what it does, it guarantees that the bees, not the bees, but the bears get uh, mag zap. So the spacing between the wires, basically bear sticks their nose in the middle. They'll touch a hot ground wire and then they get uh, basically 12 kV uh, zap and uh, it's effective. So yeah, so I'll show you uh, basically how it's set up. Uh, it is a shoddy setup. I, uh, I'm a recycler so I haven't really uh, paid big bucks to get all the, the widgets and the, uh, the handles and all the things that come together with it. Uh, I just buy the wire, I recycled, I found some T-posts, uh, these bare, not these bare, but these electric fence posts, the plastic ones. Uh, somebody threw a bunch out at the dump, so I picked them up. Uh, I do have these alligator clips, so that's how I basically activate and deactivate. So the charger's in there, I'll go in there and I'll show you how it's set up. Uh, so basically if I take the clip off and I just put it on these piece of wood so now the fence is off So it's just an easy on off so I don't get zapped uh, I did buy myself a good tester Because uh, I used to test with my hands the back of my hands, but uh, now that I've got a basically a very effective fence It knocks me out so or knocks me to the ground so I don't touch the fence anymore because it hurts too much uh, for those in Canada, so this is I think a 15 watt panel. Uh, they were on sale for 50 bucks I think at uh, Canadian Tire, and I bought two of them. Basically, I'll I'll give it a wash. There's a bunch of uh, bee poo on it, so it's just facing south, and that's enough to keep my uh, my my battery from discharging because uh, we get a lot of sun. Last year we did have issues with uh, a lot of cloudiness, so towards the end, in September, my battery was getting decharged. So I had to pull it out and recharge it. But uh, anyways, that's my setup. If I go around, uh, spring is in the air. I can't wait for pollen to come in so I can actually start my, my real beekeeping. So. Uh, yeah, so let's uh, go have a look at the, uh, the charger. So this contraption here used to be uh, a dog, a dog box. Uh, I guess the previous owner was a dog musher. 
So he had a big trailer and he put his harnesses and all this stuff in these boxes and he'd left them behind. So yeah, so I just use them for my, uh, to store my electric fences components. So I've got my little solar charger there for my battery. Uh, over here, it's just a Parmac Mag 12. I used to buy the plug-in ones or a few different types, but uh, I found this is the, the uh, foolproof one. So I have three of them now and uh, they're really good. Uh, and I stay away from the plug-in ones because they're too powerful and too sensitive and any ground outs really causes havoc on the circuits. So I've just gone with that battery. And over here, I've just got a RV Marine starter battery. So it's uh, like 120 amp hours. Uh, it's a hundred bucks a Canadian tire. It's the cheapest one, deep cycle. And usually it, it'll, this one's about three years old now. So what I do is I, before I put them away for, uh, for winter, I give them a good uh, full charge. So that way they, uh, they don't uh, get damaged over winter. I leave them in my shed outside, but, uh, and then I give them a refresh charge just before I put them back in. Uh, but anyways, that's the charger setup. So the other thing is, so the red pin is your hot. So basically it goes and I've got a alligator clip wire here and then that's where the alligator clip goes over here. So then I just clip it on here and it activates the fence. And the ground is on permanently. So in the background there, there's a ground wire. And then basically it comes out through the back. The wire's right here. And then I just have it on my bottom wire, metal wire. And then I'll show you where the ground is. So my fence charger used to be installed here on a pole, uh, but I've put a new one in, so I still have my, uh, just a piece of, of uh, a ready rod there, like a thread rod, and then I've got them connecting to the bottom wire, and then I've got daisy chains there going from wire to wire to, to act, to, to ground all the wires, and over here, you can see this is how I transfer all the the power from wire to wire so that uh, they all get uh, nice and hot. So this way I just need one simple ground rod and I get maximum power. So here's my charger or my, my tester. That's a Gallagher. Uh, basically it lets me test the ground ground and the hot wire you touch the hot wire on here and then you put this on either in the ground or on your ground wire and you want this to read at least as close to max as possible so my charger is 12 kv is max and i'd say 90 percent of the the wires uh, produce a, a, a 12 kv shock uh, I just buy these rolls or a roll of uh, for my ground wires and some it's just a electric fence uh, galvanized wire I think it's uh, 14 gauge you can get it out of home hardware fairly cheap you just bring it in so technically you should test your uh, your fence uh, I'd say at least once a month especially if there's been uh, windy and looks like uh, stuff falling on your fence or looks damaged but uh, it's good practice to test it so if I test this so so this is 10 kV to the ground which is uh, which is actually decent so if I uh, do the same now uh, I'm not sure how to hold my phone and film this at the same time but uh, let's try that okay so I don't get zapped So hard to see. Let's try again. So basically close to 10 to the ground. And if I touch one of my ground wires, so it's 10, 11. So this is where you can actually test the quality of your ground. So you can see that my, my I guess you can't really see where I'm clicking, but so there's 12 kV, so which is perfect. So this is the max output of this uh, charger. And that's what you want. 
Okay, just uh, getting my second yard set up with the fence. Uh, the other thing you'll notice, I didn't really mention it, but uh, so that pallet fence with black geotex, it's one to create uh, a microclimate where the bees are, uh, but also uh, and a wind barrier, but what else it does is uh, basically it slows any bear down. So a bear is seeing a barrier, will have to slow down. It can't just plow through the fence. So by having the pallet fence there, basically, I'm making the bear slow down. So basically they have to uh, approach the fence cautiously. So it's uh, it's part of my uh, my strategy to, to have a, basically a almost 100% proof uh, bear enclosure so in this one here I just use a cooler an old cooler to put the battery uh, just check the wires out I did a walk around everything looks pretty good I just have to tighten a couple wires here and there and uh, this one uh, should go a lot quicker I'm just stepping out so you can see and I guess in this yard here uh, this is about 15 kilometers from my yard so my my home yard is that way 15 kilometers that way uh closer to those mountains about two kilometers for those mountains over there uh so here the willows seem to be out and i can't really see it from here but i'll share some pictures a lot of south facing slopes here that have been bare of snow in this area here uh, similar winter temperatures but at this time of year there's a microclimate uh, much warmer so most of the snow is melted and there's crocuses on those slopes and uh, which is good so that's why this yard here always gets a head start and that's probably why I'll move a colony or two into this yard uh, sometime this week on a sunny day I'll just pack them up and bring them over and I guess lastly on this electric uh, fence setup uh, so for example there's three three and a half colonies in there uh, at I just bought a nook there for another project so it's 378 bucks for a nook shipped up to Whitehorse uh, a poly hive setup is another 200 say two three hundred dollars with the frames uh, throw in all your time the emotional attachment to some of your colonies so you can see how uh, paying 250 bucks for a Parmac uh, charger another 100 bucks for a battery uh, 50 bucks for a solar panel probably another $50 in hardware some wires and stuff but you get to use those anywhere you can see it's uh, that's insurance especially when you live out in the boonies or in the bush it's important you protect your investment and I guess the other one is uh, if a bear starts getting into your colonies they'll always get in there and uh, the only other option after that is uh, is killing the bear which I don't think is the right answer so same with livestock my I'm gonna be setting up my electric fence on my chickens and because uh, bears don't know they're just hungry same with lynxes and all the animals that do visit uh, no point uh, destroying those animals just do your due diligence and buy a fence and protect your bees and protect the bear.